Hello and welcome back to the White Pew podcast. It's me, yeah gal, it's ZM. I don't know why I decided to start this like that. That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> it is Sunday 13th of March 2022 and I'm going to read you this week's text. Um, but first, a little friendly reminder, if you haven't already, please could you... Um, give us a rating or a review if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify. It will help out in convincing podcast sponsors that we are professionals. <laughs> and yeah, it will help us kind of, that sponsorship will help us level up a little bit, get some better equipment, invest a bit more time in the writing because we won't have to worry about the money. So it will help out. Thank you. If you have already. Um, I'm going to get straight to the review now. This week's text is a review of Inventing Anna, the Netflix series that comes to you from Shondaland. Um, And I know it's been like popping off a bit, hasn't it? It's been a little bit buzzy, but um, I had some thoughts. Everyone's got thoughts, right? But I've got my own thoughts and they're exactly the same as everyone else's, but I've got a theory, a pop cultural hot take that I just couldn't not write about especially because Anna Delvey went to CSM and is secretly a little gallery girly um so it feels relevant this is technically this is going under the whitepew.com slash art section this counts um but yeah I'll get on and read it I love pop culture's toxic white women especially the Americans even when I hate them, when they irritate and annoy me, I love them. You might remember that I had a great time during the, Cal- during the Caroline Calloway years. And now I can't wait for that Elizabeth Holmes documentary. I'd pay good money to spend a day in her head, just bumbling around and having a look at things. I read the New York Mag article about Taylor Lawrence's feud and the move to the Washington Post. I thought... I must keep tabs on this because I'm dead certain that'll be an emerging drama in the future and I want to be prepared to hit the ground running when it all kicks off. I even still love Joanne the Scammer because amongst the drama and humour is a deadpan fiction that still hits the spot. It's all the drama, Mick. I just love it. I love the girl boss grift. I eat it up. Scandals about men don't hit in the same way. The Fire Festival documentary was good, but only for its comic value, in an arrested development kind of way. The Tinder swindler was just sad. Man lies on dating app is banal, standard. None of you are six foot two, and it is important. Pop culturally speaking, the frat bro heist just ends up being male privilege malfunctioning. There's nothing surprising about men trying to blag their way through something, so when their enormous scams fail, it just feels like a sad, soggy thump. Nothing like the cartoon punchline of a girl boss scammer. Inventing Anna is the newest series from Shonda Rhimes. It's on Netflix's little top 10 in the UK listicle, so it really feels like everyone in the entire world is watching. I finished it over a week while doing other things, only half paying attention. The half of me that was paying attention needed a soothing serotonin hit of something reliably okay. It's all very Shondaland, telling us the story of Anna Delvey and her big hustle. There's heavy drama. Sometimes the acting gets silly. And in that, the show makes very specific choices. There's one thing that we have to get straight. Anna Delvey is my perfect girl boss scammer. A complete random who popped up in New York in the 2010s. She told a bunch of fancy hedge fund banker bros that she was a German heiress with a fat trust fund. Then she asked them to lend her a couple of million dollars to start a dynamic visual art centre slash private members club a la Soho House. It nearly worked until it didn't. In 2018, an article in New York Magazine blew the lid. Anna Delvey was actually Anna Sorokin, a Russian woman who didn't have a trust fund, 
She did have a bunch of forged wire, wire transfer receipts, though, and rich friends who could pay her way with a polite IOU. She also had the absolute fucking audacity. It was a scam, and it was delicious, because a bunch of rich people had been swindled. The art world loves money and doesn't need to see it to believe it. Just look at the breathless excitement around NFTs. Everyone eats it up. Everyone is still kind of losing their minds. God, I love the frenzy. When it feels like everyone on the internet is looking at the same thing and screaming. 2018, the crest of my very online brain rot years. I was young, hot and messy. I ate the Anna Delvey story up because it was a mess that didn't implicate me in any way, but it still spoke to me in my language. Art and power, hustling the old guard, the rush of being in a big city and making a name for yourself. We all still believed in the mythic power of the girl boss back then. Things are very different now. Inventing Anna tells the story through the perspective of through the perspective of Vivian Hunt, a very fictional journalist who works at Manhattan magazine. I see what you did there. She used to be at the top of her game, girl bossing it like a rom com protagonist. But then something professionally bad happened. We aren't immediately told what that is, but it hangs over her like a tumultuous silent cloud. She's been banished to Scriberia, a desk cluster where older writers who are past their prime get sent, put out to pasture for a gentle ramp down into retirement. Vivian, te Vivian teeters over, the, over that edge with them too. She's very pregnant and looking for a way to engineer her journalistic redemption before the baby comes and gives her a new plural identity. Jesus Christ, even the image of journalism as a profession feels like fictional magic. Writers with job security, a full-time contract and maternity leave. Not freelance, in this economy. I can't. It feels like another century and I have to make such an enormous mental leap to, dis to suspend my disbelief for the background and set up alone. But Vivian stumbles across Anna's story when it is coming to its end when she's been taken to jail. Vivian fights with her bland male editor about the validity of pitching this story. He thinks Anna's a dumb wannabe socialite, but Vivian insists that this is a story about class, social mobility, feminism, big financial institutions, their gatekeepers, and our identity under capitalism. She gets some extra time to work on the story, but the clock is ticking. The show starts with an ex-girl boss, babe, on a time-crunched mission to prove a point. As Vivian figures out what happened to Anna, or what Anna made happen, the story unfolds for us too. We watch the Anna Delvey scam come together as Vivian goes round interviewing the people involved. We view it from multiple perspectives as they are told to Vivian. And Vivian starts butting in and bothering Anna's lawyer, Todd, this kind of shitty but has a heart of gold guy whose legal offices are in a we work. They bounce their discoveries off each other, building the picture of the scam in tandem. It gets wilder and bigger and messier, more bravado, more audacity. The scale zooms out. As the series continues, Anna makes a plan for her art space slash social club and the scams take on a direction. People come out of the woodwork, withholding their hurt and embarrassment, so Vivian has to tease it out of them in these tense exchanges. As they tell their story about Anna, as they tell their stories about Anna, we get fun, messy, rich people moments, good meme soundbite dialogue that's already popping up on my TikTok for you page. And the clock just keeps ticking on. Is someone else going to get to this story first? Is someone going to change their mind about what's on the record? Is the editor man going to pull the piece and cut the magazine's losses? And is Vivian going to manage to write this piece in time before the baby comes? It sounds like it should be good TV. We all have, we have all the right components. It's within reach. It's for the taking. 
but there is something big holding the series back from reaching its full potential. First, Vivian thinks Anna is a feminist anti-hero. That's what she says and that's how she treats her. On a human level, I get it. There is a common thread linking these women together, an unspoken bond. They are both women who have failed in some capacity. Anna at pulling off this heist and Vivian at being a good, good in air quotes, journalist. They are both surrounded by men who fail upwards, who are afforded graces that they don't have access to. Both of them have had to clench and reckon with their own failures and be held accountable. That is so juicy and interesting. I just wish it had been delivered in a more sophisticated way. Because as the episodes roll out, this shared experience of failure becomes a girl boss redemption cycle. Vivian is a working mother and the unborn baby plays such a cerebral role in her motivation. She's cooking a kid in her belly and a story in her brain. She gives birth to them both in tandem like some 90s noughties feminist get the work done throwback. Literally, as Vivian gives birth and pushes a child Out of her vagina, she screams, I need to do the work. I need to do the work. Labour and labour. Being in, really in, labour. This core value of work being necessary, needed. This sits at the centre of the story Vivian thinks she's telling. From that centre, it leaks out and colours the entire arc of the series. Anna stops being someone who girl bossed a little too close to the sun and she becomes a vessel through which Vivian can renegotiate her relationship to success. And I don't mean to turn this into a galaxy brain hot take. I'm just saying I, that I fucking hated that. Also, there is not a single likeable character in this series. Not a single one. And I'm fine with that because, again, I love the mess and the drama but they're unlikable and perfect. Vivian is annoying, but she is the perfect obsessed reporter. Her husband is forgettable, but even he's the perfect, bland, supportive husband. Todd is incompetent and over-involved, but he's the perfect, scrappy underdog lawyer. His wife is the perfect, rich, beautiful, clever and understanding wife. Their partners only chip in momentarily so they can drive the plot forward, add spicy intrigue. They are perfect supporting characters. Casey is Anna's annoying spiritual friend, but she's the perfect woo-woo self-love life coach, Gertie. Neff is the perfect spiky best friend. Rachel is just the perfect self-victimising white woman. As we wheeled through this mad cast of characters, I found myself pining after a spanner in the works of this perfect world. I wished Todd's wife and Vivian's husband would just pull a fast one and have an affair. I wished Neff and Casey had a conversation about how crazy all these white people were. I wished the futurist boyfriend had returned for vengeance. I wished for blood, a fight, a climax. I wanted chaos. The story is mostly told, is told mostly through Vivian's perspective, and I understand why. It's a good technical choice that makes the mechanics of storytelling so much cleaner. For the sake of understanding, the timeline of drama and events has to be kept neat so that we can actually follow along. But the story is coming to us through people's individual accounts, stories in retrospect as they were told to Vivian, the journalist, TM. I wanted the drama we usually find in Shonda's recognisable style. At Netflix series scale, it could have been so good, but it was too neat, too contained. We are told the story as it's told to Vivian and by Vivian, and it arrives at us in this neat, sanitised package. It's pre-processed, a serious article already. All the good bits have been smoothed off and polished out. I don't want the chaos so it can feel more like real life. I want the chaos so it can feel more like fiction, like melodrama. 
It feels like a silly wish because I think what I'm looking for doesn't exist. I think the part I'm missing, I think the missing part I'm pining after is Anna's perspective. Throughout the series, we never enter her head. She remains unknowable and mysterious. But the actual Anna Delvey is quite boring, at least on Instagram. I scrolled back, of course I scrolled back, to her posts from before, 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 when she was this gallery girly and her posts were just the usual. Venice, Basel, in front of a jet in grayscale. Kuhn's, Kusama, Hearst, Gagosian, Pace. Boring, boring, boring. It's all just rich people art, blue chip and bankable. No taste, no actual fun, just money, or the image of it at least. But that checks out because very rich people in the art world are not serious about their own richness. They're not real people. They have very bad breath. They have stilted conversations. They are embarrassing at parties. Like, it's not glamorous. The art world isn't really where chic rich people go. They turn up at the Freeze VIP day and hang around awkwardly in their boat shoes and Joseph coats, stilettos scraping along the weird tent carpet. So maybe it's better not to enter Anna's head and tell the story from there. Maybe that'd be impossible or boring. Maybe it's just banal looking back on it as ancient history. Maybe you had to be there. Inventing Anna falls flat because it looks for logic a reason, a motivation. The thing that makes Anna Delvey the perfect girl boss scammer is that, from the outside, it was also fucking random and ridiculous. The series tries to make it a good story by inserting narrative, structure and storytelling mechanics. But the beauty of it was in its still... Was in, <laughs> the beauty of it was in its silliness. It makes me feel ridiculous to say this, but... I prefer the clickbait fiction. I just think some things are best left to fade away until they become urban legend. And that's the review. Thank you very much for listening. If you want the text version of this, um, it will be on thewhitepube.com forward slash art reviews, um, art hyphen reviews slash inventing Anna, um, I think. That'll be it. Thewhitepube.com forward slash inventing Anna, maybe, probably. Um, it will be linked in the show notes. I don't know our own URL, okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> what else? Um, oh, yeah. If you, another reminder, if you could please rate and subs- rate and subscribe. No, not rate and subscribe. Um, rate and review um, on Apple or Spotify. Just leave a little review, leave a little rating, and it'll help us convince podcast people that we are professional and serious we are to be taken seriously and we have a serious audience for serious reviews and that we don't spend our time talking about fake german heiresses on tv um other than that i'll be reading this week's review next week if you listen to this on sunday um i'll be reading during the week um so drop in if you want to be read to or you want to hear some behind the scenes thoughts um other than that i hope you have a good week and i'll see you next time for At least my text in the next two weeks will be a big chunky art thought where I talk to lots of people and do some chatty analysis, which is my favourite way to write. So I'm really looking forward to my next text and I hope you are too. So keep well until then. Goodbye.